Hackers hack a pipeline, and now gas prices are rising, housing prices are rising, and just about everything else. What is going on with the economy? If you've gone to a fast food restaurant recently, or at least driven around your city and driven by one, you've noticed something pretty interesting. There are signs on almost every single one asking for people to come back to work. I was just at Burger King the other day and I tried to go in the lobby and the lobby was closed and I was like, oh, COVID restrictions. And then I saw a sign on the door and it actually said this. It said that they're not able to open the lobby because they do not have enough employees to actually work the lobby. Well, this is happening, uh, happening obviously because of us giving free cash to people, some of which didn't even need it. And that free cash that people are getting as a result of Biden's COVID policies is just actually keeping people from work. They don't have to work because they're getting free money from the government. And so our economy is just absolutely nuts. I'm presently looking for a house and almost everywhere in America, the housing inventory is incredibly low, which is causing housing prices to go sky high. Gas prices are going sky high because of the hacking of that pipeline by those guys in Russia. And here in the southeast where I live, it's caused people to make run on gas stations like crazy, like a zombie apocalypse is coming. And so people are rushing to the gas station. Gases, gas stations are losing their gas. And then people have to wait for the tankers to come in. And they're waiting in a line for that tanker to fill that, that gas station up with gas. And then finally, tons of people are coming to it. And it's just nuts. And it's going to cause the price of gas to go sky high, too. So I was just reading a Wall Street journal article by James McIntosh. And it confirms what the White House and the Federal Reserve will not be honest about. Inflation is here and it's staying for a while. And if you don't trust the folks at the Wall Street Journal, our good friend Warren Buffett, no, not the Margaritaville guy, that's Jimmy. Warren said, we are seeing substantial inflation we are raising prices. What is probably going to happen is we're going to experience inflation like Jimmy Carter style inflation where it sticks around for a long time and we're gonna to have to adjust the way we live because of this inflation. Turns out artificially infusing cash into the market by handing loads of free money, whether it's needed or not, actually de-incentivizes people from going back to work which in turn creates a lack of supply, which artificially raises demand and then creates a recipe for what CNBC tells us is inflation accelerating at its fastest rate in 12 years. If I was a student of history, I'd say it sounds like the Democrats are attempting to force a new New Deal era on the American economy. By the way, FDR created artificial demand by making it harder for employers to hire workers. Check it out. If nothing else, Democratic elitists think they're better than you and believe that we're in a let them eat cake era. I mean, we obviously are all in on making sure that we meet the president's goals of getting to 100 percent clean electricity by 2035 and uh, net zero carbon emissions by 2050. And, um, you know, if you drive an electric car, this would not be affecting you, clearly. Uh, if they can't afford 10% spikes in gas, well, let them buy incredibly expensive electric cars. Makes sense, doesn't it? And I'll say it just straight up. I I'm a little bit concerned with what's going on right now. But here's the thing that I think that I can speak to and speak to as a bit of an authority. If you've been watching the news, if you've been looking around and you see crisis everywhere and things are going south and you've been disturbed, upset, even depressed, angry at everything that you've been seeing on the news so much that you say like many have been saying, oh, I just got to turn that stuff off. I can't listen to the news anymore. Well, the only thing that that's going to leave you with, unless you have hope in something bigger than everything that's going on around us, is it's just going to leave you with fear. But I don't believe that we're supposed to operate in fear. And in fact, when you're operating in fear, your brain starts to operate differently. You make decisions that you normally wouldn't make. This is why totalitarian-minded people, they love crisis. Because if they can get people to operate in fear, then they can try to convince them that all sorts of crazy things make sense, like communism and socialism. And trust me, you look back in history... I'm a history teacher and I've studied it pretty in depth. You look back in history, there's never been a, a country or a nation that has ever accepted socialism, pure socialism and, and communism, except under duress. So fear is a very, very potent agent for all the wrong kinds of change. But the thing that we need to operate in is faith. If you can put your faith in something that's bigger than everything else that's going on around you, well, then you've got the cure for what's going on inside of you.
in the midst of everything that's going on around you. I turned to my wife the other day and I just said, hey, you know, I, I know all of this stuff is, is going wrong, but the faith that we have teaches us that Christ uses everything for our good. Now, before you tune me out and just think that this is just a message for Christians, from a Christian for Christians, this is for everybody. If you're concerned with what's going on in the world, if you're afraid and you believe that fear is the exact opposite thing that needs to happen for you to make wise decisions, which we know it is, then here's what I would encourage you to do. Consider faith as the appropriate principle to operate in right now. Not the kind of faith that says blind faith, just, just trust in something that, that, that has no evidence, because that's not what faith is. I heard somebody the other day say, faith is, is belief in the absence of evidence. That is not what faith is at all, at least from the Christian perspective. Here's what faith is. I'm talking about the kind of faith that looked beyond the earth and saw the moon. The kind of faith that made uncomfortable okay because you believed that a little bit of discomfort could potentially make you better. I'm talking about the kind of faith that put you on a plane trusting that it would take you to your destination. The Bible calls faith the evidence of things not seen, which means this. True faith is such a close walk with God that no matter what you're going through, He can help you find peace find hope, find strength, find positivity, find any number of things that you need when you're going through difficult times. He can be your anchor for whatever storm you're going through in life. So that's what real faith is. Real faith is this kind of evidence of things that are going on inside of you that are stronger than anything else that's going on outside of you. So here's the deal. You drive around your city and you see those signs you drive around your city and you look for a home. You drive around your city and you look at gas prices. That's enough to make anybody upset. So yeah, you can put your faith in this world, but it doesn't make much sense to do that, especially now, right? Where we're going through so much. It makes way more sense to put your faith in things that may be more, more eternal, more permanent, that things that are above this temporary material world, things that are in the realm of the thought and in the heart that go far beyond what's going on in our world. It's only there that you will find the power to step away from your fear and step into faith and perhaps step into the boat with the one who calmed the storm. By the way, that's, that's Jesus, for those of you who don't read the Bible, just, just making that clear. Catch new episodes of Indie Thinker with Reed Uerman for free right now by going to YouTube or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. Simply type Indie Thinker with Reed Uberman in the search bar and click on my face. Don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe to stay informed when a new episode drops.